Good afternoon everyone. My name is Naren. I've been working in the software industry since 2004. Uh, I work for a few MNCs like Microsoft, Cisco, Bank of America in various positions. And I quit my job in 2018 uh, and I started my own firm called Rosen Computing, which is an edutech company and we have uh, a patent on fraud analytics, financial fraud analytics. And uh, so most of the time we work with Python related stuff and not only Python, Python is major uh, technology that we are using on most of our products. And apart along with that C++ and Go and Java, so wherever it is necessary. So, and in, I, I started my training career in 2005. I started my profession also with C++, training is also with C++. Uh, from 2005, I've been working with Python along with C++. And to, from 2015, I've been completely into Python development. And uh, we were part of uh, an analytical team in Bank of America. And we developed a few uh, algorithms there. And um, we have done a lot of work on ML, not deep learning. Most of the time we worked on ML. And we did predictive analytics there. And that's my background. And teaching is my passion. That's the reason I'm, not, I'm doing it. I never stopped it. So I'm working as a CEO and CTO uh, roles uh, in Rosen Computing. We have a 25 member team in Hyderabad. Um, everybody works with C++, Python, Go and work with multiple technologies. Okay, that's my background. And about the program, so for faculty development program. So last year also I have conducted this program uh, in the May around in 2019. So, so this year uh, that I have given very basic introduction of Python in the last year. So today, I would like to give you the industrial orientation, how a, a topic is different, uh, how a, a concept is different for a professional and a student, how different it is for both of the people. So I would like to give you the differentiation between how a professional thinks about a concept, any technique, okay, how it works in the real time. Uh, data structures and the built-in data structures with Python, that's the first topic, then how to use Meta programming, something like decorators and and uh, the design topics like object orientation. So I'll give you a very good scenario. So where where exactly you require object orientation, how really the inheritance is useful, how really the polymorphism is, is useful over a period of time. Because uh, what, what I observed in the industry, I mean the academic side and the industry side, there is a huge gap between the expectation and what we are learning in the academics. So I would like to fill that gap. So, so we'll start. Okay. So uh, most of you guys are uh, professors and assistant professors here in the uh, today we have uh, an head count of 450 out of 750. 750, 750 people have registered for this program and 350, 450 sorry, 455 are there right now and time is 25 right now. Uh, let them join. So meanwhile, we'll start with the introduction of data structures and you learn data structures in the perspective of application development. Okay. Not like you construct a data structure, something like a linked list or a tree or a graph. You use pointers and build the data structures. It's not like that. So that is the initial part of learning. So when you are there in the uh, graduation first year, that's what, that's where you learn that. Okay. You learn the internals of the data structures. Okay, that is separate subject. And when it comes to application development like Java and C sharp and Python, like high level programming languages. So you need to have a different perspective of using these data structures. So Python has five built in data structures. We are going to discuss about that. So first of all, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, I would like to make it as interactive as possible, like yesterday. Uh, so I'll ask you a few questions immediately how to tell me yes or no. Okay. I don't ask you many questions and sometimes I'll, I'll also ask you what is your understanding of a concept? Like what is uh, the data structure, data structure according to you? Okay. You, you guys have to give me very basic answer within a few seconds. I don't want to waste your time. So I'll ask you a question. I'll just wait for five seconds and whichever is the answer based on that. I just forward. Okay. Because I cannot wait. If you have any, any particular questions, there is a separate QA session at the end. So if it is really important, if I think, uh, I definitely answer your question. Okay. So we have, uh, I think now it is class 5, 540, more than 540 people attended now. So I cannot answer, I cannot answer all your questions. Okay. 
So let's start. So the first question is, what is data structures? What is a data structure? How important it is? Everybody knows that even if you go for uh, a small company interview with 10 years of experience, still they'll ask you this question. Okay, data structures are everywhere. So the analytical kind of programming is evaluated from uh, with the help of data structures for any any level of uh, any level of profession in software engineering they won't leave you without asking a question on data structures even you are a manager okay so it has definitely significance in the interviews and in development okay fine so the first question is data structures what is a data structure according to you just give me uh, i'm just waiting for the next 10 seconds so whichever is the answer i just start with that collection of items okay storing data in memory okay organizing data okay excellent so uh, i got the answer so what is a data structure exactly so data structure is a construct using which you organize the data in memory so that you can process that information later efficiently what does it mean by process okay wherever there is data you definitely want to process the data right so there is a data in in a computer so definitely you want to process the data you want to manipulate that you want to do some arithmetic with the data it might be a number it might be a text it might be a date right so you want to process the data so what kind of operations you do the basic operations are like creating data i mean creating a new data item in memory and reading the data and updating the data and deleting the data updation means once you, you take the data from the memory and you process it you do some kind of math or some business logic and again you save it back so these crud operations create read update and delete crud operations we always we often call this as crud operations i think everybody uh, is familiar with crud particularly in, in the industry we always use crud wherever there is data we have crud create read update and delete okay so you can see the definition now so data structure is a construct using which we organize the data in memory so that we can process the data efficiently okay so processing data includes create read update and delete okay so that's the basic definition now let's go to python so everybody is familiar with python basics right so you know there are five types integer float bool all these are primitive types right so as long as you are working with two or three variables that's that's fine so you take two variables and you read the you read the data and you compare them or you just process them taking two variables most of your work is done with two variables but when it comes to reality in the industry so most of the time you do you do you deal with entities right employee data and books information and students information and transactions so data is not that simple data is structured you always deal with structured data or entities let's take a banking transaction transaction id amount bank id atm id your id time and amount you have a set of attributes all the time if you take employee data you have name and uh, id name age department salary you, you definitely have more than one attribute right so how do you handle this kind of data First of all, let's start with a very basic example. How do you add two numbers? To add, to add two numbers, you take two variables. That's fine. That's enough for you. You take X, you read the value. Take Y, you read the value. You just sum the values, you just print it. Right? If I ask you to add 100 numbers and ask you to compute average of 100 numbers, when do you do that? A simple scenario is when you want to see what is the average mark of a classroom average mark of a classroom you have to collect the total marks of each and every student if there are 100 students you have to collect all the 100 students okay and you do then you collect all the information all the 100 uh, um, excuse me so you collect the data from all the people and you have now you have to take 100 variables it's impossible to take 100 variables right i mean it's possible but it's very difficult so you have to go with some kind of compound types or composite types right 
fine so python has five primitive data structures again so our compose com composite types list tuple or tuple and set frozen set and dict okay fine so we have five such composite types where you can hold each and every type can hold a bunch of items instead of taking two or three variables take one of these types and create one variable that can hold multiple values now again let's come back to data structures so i, I would like to share a small story with you uh, data structure is all about organizing the data. That means if you organize data properly, you can efficiently retrieve it, you can efficiently store it back, you can efficiently delete and update it. You can perform it efficiently. How come it is efficient when you organize the data? I'll give you a small um, story. So I always uh, give the same story to the students. Okay, so I have a, a group of friends they stay very nearby to my home and uh, and all of them are not married they're unmarried people so every weekend they watch movies and they go out stations they really enjoy their life and but the problem is whenever they are at their home or room it's a flat they're staying very nearby and they asked me to come to their room and they asked me to cook something for them so I am I'm a, I'm a better cook when compared to all of my friends. So they asked me to cook something. Uh, one day they asked me to cook chicken curry. Okay. So it, it, it is a one bedroom flat. I mean one BHK, one bedroom, one hall and one kitchen, right? Fine. So they asked me to cook chicken curry. They brought all the ingredients that are required to cook the chicken curry. You, you understand how organized bachelor rooms are, right? Of course, they're not our next. They're dirty, right? Okay, so they brought everything and they left the room and they went for a movie, all the three people. So I'm the fourth guy. So I was alone. Uh, they asked me to prepare something before they're coming. So I started preparing the curry. That's fine. I was looking for chili powder over there. Obviously, chili powder is required to cook the curry, right? I was looking for chili powder all over the kitchen. I did not find it. It was not there in the ingredients that they brought. It was not there, neither it is there in the kitchen. I was literally performing a linear searching operation in the kitchen. I was opening each and every cabinet over there and cupboard, either chili powder, either chili powder, either chili powder, either chili powder, no, 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 no. I was looking for chili powder all over the kitchen. I could not find it. The kitchen has more than 200, 300 items. I was performing linear searching, taking everything and comparing either chili powder or not. I was not able to find it. If things are organized, I'm supposed to find it in the kitchen. I have to find it in the kitchen. I don't know whether it is missing or it is not there. But somehow I spent a linear searching operation. I did this linear searching operation. I could not find it. And I went to the hall and I went, again, I've been doing the same thing. I was searching for chili powder. It was not there. I searched for bedroom. I spent 30 minutes. I did not find it anywhere. I don't know why. After 30 minutes, shockingly, I found the chili powder in the toilet. I don't know what these people do with the chili powder. I literally don't know. <laughs> okay, so I don't know why it was misplaced there. But again, I did not use that chili powder for the curry for your information. If things are organized, definitely that should be kept in the place, right? Okay. So, forget about the story. Let's come back to the kitchen again. If there are thousand items in the kitchen, including chili powder, you don't know where exactly chili powder is, right? And how do you search for chili powder? As you don't have any knowledge where exactly is the chili powder, you perform a linear searching. I mean, you go element by element and item by item and you identify, somehow you identify or the worst case is not finding it. If it's not there, you, you don't find it. That's the worst case. But you have to go through all the thousand items, right? Fine. And here, one thing you need to understand, 
if things which fall under same category are kept at one particular place one specific place it is very easy to identify an item that is the first point second one go to your home look at your mom how blindly she picks a chili powder she blindly picks the chili powder right yeah whenever she wants chili powder she blindly pick it she blindly picks it right and if she wants sugar she blindly picks it of course things are organized everything is in the available in the kitchen but she is not performing linear searching like you because she has a map in her mind she has intelligence in her mind you understand so she has some knowledge and intelligence whenever she gets chili powder in her mind immediately that chili powder will be translated to its location and hand will pick it right so if you if you look at these two closely in the first scenario when you are searching for a chili powder the scenario this organization it is organizing data in such a way is very close analogy when it compares to a list you can compare that with a list a list is a data structure where similar things things which fall under same category they are kept at that place one particular place and dictionary the second one is the map in python it is called dictionary these two are very very popular data structures in fact with the dictionary you can do miracles you will get so, so you get so many benefits from the dictionary with the dictionary you can i think you can survive without using any other data structure only with the dictionary you can survive there is no application in the world which is not built without which is not built without dictionary okay fine so let's jump into the code so that is the introduction part so how a list looks like let me show you something um, assume that these are maximum temperatures in the last week and one last hmm. this is how list looks like a list is a collection of items which fall under the same category and list also stores homogeneous data homogeneous means the same thing things which fall under same category and if you want to access individual items in a list you use indexing l of 0 is the first one l of 1 and l of 4 you can access individual items okay now the question is if you want to sum two numbers you simply use plus operator but if you want to sum these many numbers either you have to use a looping statement or simply use the function built-in function sum which does it for you in python don't try to write any code if that feature is already available not only python all the high level programming languages okay this list is a collection of items the list is not like array in c language it is a it is like a vector in java or c plus plus a vector is a dynamically resizable array which grows as per the demand initially it allocates eight elements it allocates internally memory for eight elements whenever that eighth element crosses immediately it doubles the size in memory it reserves it preserves and reserves some space of its physical location and items in this list are stored side by side okay so how do you sort this list there's a built-in sorted function you can sort that in increasing orders And how do you find out the maximum? Same. Minimum? Same. Excellent. So you have a list. And this is how you do it. And you don't need to write the code first of all. Of course, as a basic, you need to know how to find out the biggest item in a list and minimum item in a list and how to sort 
okay the sorting algorithm that is being used in python is called tim sort which is very consistent sorting algorithm so whatever is the distribution of the data in this list this this algorithm works consistently performant okay and the question here is how do you sort a list with tuples if it is as it is as it the all the items are uh, just simple numbers right so you can easily do maximum minimum and sort it what if you have the data a data something like this let's take employee records employee id employee name employee um, salary and employee age okay so let me write st. let me take uh, four records like this Okay, so let's take four employee records. So we have discussed a list, we have discussed a tuple earlier, and now we have the data of list of tuples. And how do you sort this? Sorting a single list, simple list is pretty straightforward. You just go with sorted function. If you want to find out maximum, you go with max function. If you want to go with minimum function, you go with minimum function, right? Because that's just a list of numbers. But when you take entities like this, how do you do that? So what we do is, by default, this sorted function sorts on first items of the tuple. When a list has another composite type, another composite type, like a list of lists or list of tuples or list of sets, it takes the first item as a comparison criteria when it's sorting all the items, okay? The reason is there is a built-in function called a lambda key lambda function which is responsible for which is responsible to provide the comparison criteria. Okay. Excellent. So that, that is the reason it is sorting by default on based on the first item. Now if you change that so my requirement here is I want to sort this list. I want to sort, excuse me. So I want to sort this list based on their salary. I want to sort them in decreasing order of their salaries. So salary is third one, right? So zero, one, two. So if you change this lambda to x of two, you are done. See, this list has been sorted based on their salaries. And you want to do that in the reverse order? Done. So the wiki is the guy who is getting highest salary, followed by John, Samantha, and Amanda. Okay. The same thing, if you want to find maximum or minimum, you use the same criteria. Take a list. Tell me which is the criteria for comparison with the help of Lambda. So you'll get an employee. So reverse is not required here, right? Wiki is the employee who is getting maximum salary. And who is the youngest employee? The youngest employee, the third one, right? Employee, the third one, zero, one, two, three. The third one is the 
each. So okay. Fine. So this is how you find out. So in real time, most of the time you deal with the structured data like this. And of course, the, these days, no SQL and non-structured language, no structured query language. So MongoDB, CouchDB, ArangoDB, there are so many S no SQL databases. And in our projects, we are working with MongoDB and Neo4j, Cassandra, so Hive. So we have a few uh, no SQL databases like that. And the next important data structure is dictionary. And uh, dictionary, uh, I have given the explanation in the last class, but mostly we wanted to today, uh, we want to discuss, right? We decided to uh, work with all the use cases of a dictionary. So let's take the dictionary part. And this is world's famous data structure. There is no doubt at all. So every key value pair, okay? So it's like a key value pair. The name also has come from Oxford dictionary. In Oxford dictionary, when if you want to search for a, word obviously if you want to search for a meaning of a word you take the word and you take the first character of the word and you go for the entire uh, you directly go to that particular location right so you don't need to go through all the pages in the dictionary if the word is starting with s you directly go to s okay a dictionary is like map as i said it has intelligence to identify items but the only thing is you need to give the key okay something like a locker if you have the key you get what what is there inside the locker right that locker key has some number based on that you just directly go to that locker and you just get the key you open the locker and you get the things it's a key value pairs and this is very very famous data structure and it has excellent use cases and this also improvises your the program's efficiency and it makes programs performant okay i'll give you a few examples the first use case is indexing the custom indexing, something like in SQL databases, you might have been observed this already. We have primary key, right? In SQL databases, we have primary key. That primary key concept is actually indexing. You always have employee ID or transaction ID, all the unique columns generally you take as the index, right? And based on that key's value, it identifies the location of the remaining record. So that is the first purpose of that is the first use case for indexing. And second one, if you want to identify number of occurrences of each and every item in a list or in a file, this is one of the very frequently asked questions in the interviews. And this is a very frequently used scenario in banking sector particularly. Second one is counting problems. I'll give you a, a large file with millions of words and tell me which word occurred more number of times. So when you hear that the, the file is having a million or billion words, you, you, you get panic, right? Okay, forget about it. So that we're going to discuss very soon. Counting problems. And this problem is almost like count star in your SQL, right? The first one is indexing in SQL and second one is count counting problem, which is called select count star. And third one is grouping problem. So if you don't want to use SQL databases, go with the dictionary. It solves so many problems. And grouping problem. And fourth one is caching. This is an excellent use case. Google is the biggest cache on the earth, right? Caching means frequently used items are generally kept at nearest vicinity in the near near vicinity so that it can be retrieved very fast. And fourth one is keep the latest. Okay, so these all these are very excellent examples of all the use cases for dictionary. If you understand all the five, you use them at a lot of places and so many product companies interviews you can people can go through easy, very easily. So this is where the students are lacking the knowledge they're only understanding the syntax but they are not understanding where exactly we use this okay and in industry we use them a lot in at a lot of places so writing efficient code is always part of a profession a professional right professionals day-to-day -day activity fine 
so one thing that you need to understand is uh, as a professional as a working professional you need to reduce the time and you have to write efficient programs and you have to think in the application development perspective don't try to invent anything if you are working with high level programming language okay if you are a student definitely you have to learn data structures at, at a at a considerable depth okay so unless you are inventing something very new try to reuse whichever is there because that students that 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 fastens your development activities right fine so we are continuing with examples okay So I'll give you uh, an, a, a basic idea of what we are doing here. So truequalify.com is an e-learning platform and we give this platform for multiple institutions. So it's not like a public domain tool. So this is for particularly we are giving for uh, institutions. So anybody who is interested to teach any subject, you can take this and you can share this tool with your students. So uh, we have recently signed up with few colleges in Andhra Pradesh. Um, more than 9,000 students are going to use this tool soon by August. Uh, the idea behind this tool is truequalified.com is a platform, an integrated platform where a student can learn, a faculty can teach, a HR professional can hire people and there is a, a proprietary evaluation system and there is a blockchain based certificate verification system and ultimately for others there is a content development platform it is it has six different features okay i'll show you so one of our trainings institutes is uh, guru.truequalify.com so it's my personal site as a learner so i'll show you what you get quickly Okay, so this is how it looks like. Of course, I haven't started. I am not a student, so I haven't started anything. Generally, it looks like Amazon Prime. Okay, if you have already started learning something, so the ch colors will be changing. So right now, so I, I was part of multiple batches here. So as part of uh, 107 batch, these are the topics I'm going through. Um, let's suppose open data structures. Okay. Mm. right so what is this how this material looks like so we have done a lot of research so how to provide the best user experience so you can see that right away so every page has videos and every page has a test a quick test at the end and if you want to do some practice while you are studying a particular topic just click on the editor that immediately opens an ID there this is a browser based ID it, it, the, it the code will not be sent to your uh, to the server it doesn't take much time just run the code Mission is responding a little slow right now. Okay. Screen size. I got it. My, my mouse is my, my mouse has a problem. Okay, let, let's take something else and um, let's click on that. <clears throat> okay. Okay. 
I change these values and I can run the program. Yeah, it's working. I understood now. So just open any example, open any example and just run the code, modify the code and you can run the code. Mm, I don't modify this code. Okay. And you can change the code. on the code okay so every action that you are performing on this tool will be captured so how much time any user is doing practice what are the examples you have done and uh, how committed he is in completing the exercise on time so we have a self-paced learning so we'll give you the the entire content to you as a student and we have a trainer driven tool so trainers will give you the course so as you uh, you guys are faculties i'll show you how to uh, assign a task once you are done with a uh, session okay and uh, so student has to join uh, this is students login student has to join by providing a batch id and a six digit code and students will get a report like this at the end of the course and we collect a lot of stats and we are using analytics and we are providing this thing and we also give some predictions based on their performance and every day uh, they get tasks like this and they can start the task and they they can submit the tasks they do so many things okay and when it comes to trainer Okay, so based on the batches I'm taking, uh, let's say summer Python program 26 and let's say Python crash course. <coughs> so once I'm done with, so today, these are, these, are the these are the technologies that we are providing right now and you can create a batch, you can create a new batch, you can assign a task to an existing batch. Let's take, uh, ex this is the existing batch and uh, let's take this one assign task so for this batch the only they are they have uh, subscribed only for python and advanced python so for them the data sector subject is happening and i want to assign a new task for them so click there or click individual topics here and just say assign and give in how many number of days they have to finish this task and assign you're done okay so this will send an email to all the students and you can see their progress here Right now they haven't started anything. So you can see their status. Of course, this is a very old one. So you can see how many students are there in this. Of course, this is a, I think this is a test batch, I think. Anyway, so this is all all these are faculties, in fact. Faculties also join in a batch, right? So and MCQs and code tests and overall status. And obviously you'll get the weekly reports and monthly reports and course report and assessments and programs you can create new tests and question bank I mean new uh, multiple choice questions you can also create hacker rank like questions so that is what it, this programs is actually so so we have a tool uh, we have a special tool called for content development so which is uh, content.truecoffee.com so where we encourage authors to build the content okay so what else we have and we also have a scheduler for the faculty so if they want to teach a subject in 40 hours the tool will automatically schedule number of hours and based on the weightage of the subject it creates it gives you a schedule and colleges are having admin interface uh, i mean institutions i'm talking about and we have a content development tool it's a very huge tool 
let's take if i want to write, write an article or a material let's open some material it's it's, it's very very attractive and um, very powerful so this is how i'm creating chapters and sections you can uh, change the order and if you want to add some new section page subtitle video exercise questions anything and you can actually uh, divide one chapter into multiple chapters you can do so many things here okay so that's the very basic idea of the tool uh, as your faculties if you are interested so let me know so i'll share the tool so yeah so that's about today's session um, it's been 5:30 now <clears throat> okay so any questions and i have my personal blog if you are interested you can see that so so i think most of the content we have moved from this site to uh, truecoffee.com but we still we have uh, more than 300 articles to publish so as time is not permitting me to uh, review all those articles so more than 600 articles we have written in the last 8 uh, months i think has been published this 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 website is a little older and we have uh, users who are visiting this website all the time okay okay thank you so if you have any questions let me know so okay so we'll meet tomorrow thank you